chondrite matrices are extremely fine-grained. If one is lucky, there might be grains up to a few tens of microns, but usually it's in the micron size, sometimes even in the submicron size. This means it's really difficult to image the matrix. And if it is possible to image the matrix, on a larger scale image the matrix, then the analytical um, setup must be set in such a way that quantitative analysis becomes difficult to impossible. This is why the images I'm going to show here are um, often rather qualitative than quantitative, which is, of course, somewhat unlucky. Now, this first image here is not a high resolution image of a matrix. These are all individual pieces under the light microscope broken from a meteorite just to illustrate how the matrix looks like, looks like in well, exactly this state. So each of these little pits, bits or broken bits consist of thousands or millions of very tiny matrix grains. Now the first chondrite to show here is a CI chondrite and when we look at CI chondrite we basically only look at matrix because these consist to 99% out of matrix. So the first one here is Ivuna which is a type we tried for the CI chondrite. CI I stands for Ivuna. This is quite high resolution. It's one micrometer. So all the individual bits, grains, or crystallites here are in the sub micrometer range. And in between is some sort of a little bit unclear, maybe amorphous material. Now, this here is a chip. Chip always means it's a little bit broken, um, something like the one I just showed under light microscope. So this is a lesser magnification here, again a chip, and then we often find this nest here of magnetite. Um, sometimes there's iron oxide and all the rest here, which is basically this here, is fine-grained silicates. So this second CI chondrite is Ogo, which is quite famous or popular meteorite, maybe because there's quite a lot of it, but it's also altered. So there's calcium sulfate, this is likely secondary. Um, there's some fine-grained silicate again. This is one micron, so these are all sub, these are nanometer structures. We look here, so this might be some um, silicates maybe forming or so, and in between again something like amorphous material or so, and there is some magnetite crystal with quite nice um, edges. And finally, there's alaise and some larger nests of these magnetites, which are quite often found, or this spherulitic magnetite, larger one inside the smaller grains around here. Now the second meteorite, CV chondrites, and CV chondrites have quite large matrix grains. So this is nice to look at, this can be analyzed, that's not a problem. So this is Allende, this is a thin section, and these are all olivine grains, this might be feldspar here. The bright spots is uh, often sulfide. Now in between these, it's a little more harder to really know what it is. This is very fine-grained material, maybe in cases even amorphous. And similar is seen in, in Mokoya, so again, this is olivine here, there's some iron nickel sulfide. Or here in Vigaran, there's some sulfide inside olive, which is quite interesting. And in Leoville, there's also some enstatite here in between. And you can see that sometimes the crystals uh, have really a lot of space in between, so it really looks like a conglomerate of uh, aggregation of smaller grains. So you see in Leoville, there's less space in between, so it's more compact, so this might be some overprint on the pan body. And this conglomerate structure here in Allende can be seen in this really nice image here. So this is two microns, and we see, again see down to submicron structures here, and we can really see the individual grains that are all just mingled together into this conglomerate of what the matrix is. The same is seen here in, in Mokoya in Vigarano. There's a little less space in between, so there might have been some overprint on the, on the pan body here. And in CO, this is quite a nice and interesting image here. So this is certainly some hydrothermal um, precipitation likely on the pan body here. So this is another piece of Felix. So this is both Felix here and in the lower one, there are individual grains here, whereas here, as said, this must be some kind of precipitation or so. And in this CO, which is quite nice, we can see individual growth steps of the, of the minerals here, as you can see, at this very high resolution, um, which is quite quite nice. And you see M chondrites, these are heavily hydrously altered, which is if you look in the thin section, there's nothing like space in between individual crystals because there's a lot of re, um, new crystals that formed from hydrous alteration. So this is the silicates, the darker ones, and this in between is much, um, very likely some hydrous minerals here. Um, 
in Murray. Interestingly, there's some more space in between. The alteration is not as clear here in this in this bit. In Renato, the archondrite, again, there's uh, looks rather like a homogeneous mass, so it also looks like some overprint on the pan body, same as here in Alaris. Can be seen, and uh, sometimes there's also again this, this magnetite. These are, these are quite easy to identify the magnetite, this is why they are on every second image or so. Now, Asphere 094 is one of the most interesting meteorites because uh, it appears like, it looks like this is one of the least altered meteorites, in particular the matrix, because a lot of pre solar grains are found in the matrix. And an overprint on the pan body, whether thermal or hydrous. Um, can easily destroy pre-solar grains. Now in Asphere 094 there are lots of pre-solar grains, which means this might be a very pristine type of uh, matrix. And you can see we look at really at nanometer scale. So this is one micrometer. So this is all tens to micron, uh, tens to nanometer size grains here that you can see. And this might be even interstellar material or close to interstellar material or something like this that we look at here. So this is really quite quite interesting, but again, unfortunately, it's very difficult then to make um, an analysis here. Although I have to say, when I'm saying it's difficult to make analysis, I mean with this technique, which is secondary electron microscope, it is of course possible to get analytical results here by using a transmission electron microscope. But if you would use this, it's not possible to make these kind of pictures because in a DEM, we look at really very tiny nanometer size grains of, of so the, the, entire, um, the entire field of view we would have it would be just a few nanometers or tens of nanometers, something like this. So then it's no problem to make analytical, um, get analytical data and results, but with the SEM here, it's, it's, it's not possible, very difficult. Now just for comparison, because we're looking very often at chips, and it might be that just by breaking them, the structure might change because just bits break off or something like this. So therefore some analog material to just check this, and in the granite, certainly looks very different to what I just showed. However, in the basalt, it looks like these, these, these grains that are on the surface of these chips could be also from just breaking it because this is certainly not a basalt structure. So we need to be a little bit cautious here. Also, thin sections are polished with aluminum oxide, which is down here. So if you see this structure, it might be aluminum oxide. So you also need to be careful here. And uh, this is a matrix analog. This is an experimental ash sample or something like this. Um, but this experiment doesn't look too much like, like matrix does. So this is a very brief, well, rough introduction to matrix as because I said it's difficult. It's, it's very nice to images and have a look at it, but it, quantification is difficult. Still, this gives at least some impression how the matrix in Conrad's looks like.